Dear Mr. Philip Sidney, how do you react to this? Poets are pipers, jesters, caterpillars. If you want to know how Sir Philip Sidney reacted to these charges and my modern takeaways on Sir Philip Sidney's apology for poetry, then keep watching. I'm Dr. J. G. If you are a student or professor of English literature who is frustrated with the old literary critics, you are in the right place. Please subscribe to this channel because I'll be releasing more videos in the coming weeks on my modern takeaways on the old literary critics. Today I talk about my modern takeaway on Sir Philip Sidney's apology for poetry. Sir Philip Sidney wrote the apology for poetry in response to Stephen Gosson's School of Abuse. Stephen Gosson specifically charged poets with being pipers, jesters, and caterpillars. He charges poets in four different ways. 1. Poetry is a waste of time. 2. Poetry is the mother of all lies. 3. Poets corrupt us with lustful feelings. 4. Plato banished poets, so why shouldn't we? You might be wondering what is the big deal about poets? Are they that influential that they should be kicked out of the country? Well, it may make sense to today's audiences if we replace the word poetry with stories. In the past, most stories were carried by verse. All our epics, the Iliad, Odyssey, Ramayana, Mahabharata were all in poetry. So poetry was a pretty big deal in the past. Today, stories are carried by novels and movies. So how did Sir Philip Sidney react to Stephen Gosson? He reacted by borrowing from the old classical critic Horace. He said that stories are delightful teachers. Teachers delight? Delight to teach. Teach to delight? Delight and teach. What history or philosophy can teach as delightfully and ravishingly as stories? Here are six stories to illustrate. In the Old Testament of the Bible, King David had committed adultery with the married woman Bathsheba and he also murdered her husband Uriah. The prophet Nathan went to King David and narrated the story of two men, a rich man and a poor man. The rich man had lots of cattle and sheep. The poor man had only one lamb. The rich man stole the poor man's lamb and killed it for meat. Immediately, King David accuses the rich man. And Nathan responds by saying that you are that rich man who stole a poor man's wife when you had so many of your own. It is said that Alexander the Great carried with him a copy of Homer's Iliad wherever he went. In fact, Sidney quotes in his Apology for Poetry, Alexander left his teacher, the living Aristotle, behind him, but took the dead Homer with him. These two stories were taken from Sir Philip Sidney's Apology for Poetry. Story number three and four are taken from world history. Do you know that the stories of monkeys and crocodiles and owls and crows and mongooses in the Panchatantra were actually narrated by the Pandit Vishnu Sharma? He used these stories to educate three lazy princes on the art of administration. The word Panchatantra refers to five tricks, specifically five tricks in the art of administration. And the five tricks are how to separate friends, how to win friends, how to maintain peace through enemies, how gains may be lost and how to think before you act. And these tricks have interesting names in Sanskrit like Mitra Bheda and Mitra Labha and so on. Do you know that Ali Baba and Aladdin and Sinbad were narrated by a captivating Sherzade to an angry king to distract him from killing her? Across thousand and one nights, she narrated thousand and one tales and reformed the angry king with her tales of adventure, goodness and love. Story number five and six are my personal favorites. This 2015 Disney movie represents emotions in the form of characters inside our head. And it taught me that sadness is also a valuable emotion. In a world which applauds joy, sadness has its place. It helps to communicate to our immediate circle that we need help and we need attention. 
This 2015 movie features Anne Hathaway as Jules Austin, the founder of a rising and successful e-commerce company. She finds it difficult to balance her company with her family. You started this business all by yourself a year and a half ago, and now you have a staff of 220 people. Remember who did that? The movie finally taught me that it is okay for women to have dreams and ambitions beyond their family. Hope you are convinced about the power of storytelling and how stories are delightful teachers. In fact, today's corporate brands use storytelling as part of their marketing strategy. It is known as story marketing. So there you have it, six stories to teach you how stories can be powerful and delightful teachers. Two stories from Sir Philip Sidney's Apology for Poetry, two stories from World Literature, and two stories that are my personal favorites. I'm curious, what have stories slash films taught you? What life lesson has it given you? Has it given you a pattern to live your life by? Let me know in the comments. We now return to Sir Philip Sidney. Remember that Philip Sidney had to rebut charges against poetry? So here are the charges and their rebuttals. Charge number one. Poetry is a waste of time compared to other more serious subjects. In Sydney's time, poetry was pitted against more serious subjects like philosophy and history. We do not understand that today, but we do understand the humanities versus the sciences debate. Parents, especially Indian parents, want their children to go into serious subjects like sciences. But who wants a world full of doctors and engineers and scientists without any ethics and humanities? Buildings would crash down due to corruption. Gadgets would be created to kill human beings, organs of patients would be harvested without them even knowing about it. Only humanities can humanize the sciences. And Philip Sidney said something similar. Humanities slash stories slash poetry elevates human beings to a higher level. Poetry slash stories is the best way to inspire people into ethical living. They are the most popular philosophers. Charge number two. Poetry is the mother of all lies. Sydney refutes this charge by asking, Is Aesop's fable a lie? Is calling a wooden chess piece a bishop or a king a lie? Poets do not deal in the realm of lies and truths. They deal in a world of imagination and recreation. In fact, Sir Philip Sidney says, Poets do not affirm anything, so they do not lie. Sidney again says, The real world is like brass, but the poet's world is like gold. Their lies inspire people into something better. Charge number three. Poets corrupt society with lust. This segues well with the next charge. Charge number four. Plato banished poets from his ideal world, so why shouldn't we? Sidney answers both these charges by saying that poetry does not corrupt human beings, rather human beings corrupt poetry. Poetry in itself is a benign tool, but the use of poetry makes it evil. Just like Sidney says, a sword can kill your father or defend your country. If Plato wanted to banish poets from his country, it is because certain poets during his time abused the power of poetry. So this is how Sir Philip Sidney parried off the charges against poetry. So what are my modern takeaways? I certainly believe that storytelling is a powerful way to transform people's worldviews, be it fictional stories or real life stories. Remember today's adage, what is your story? I also believe that a certain amount of lies or fairy tales are required to instill hope in human beings. Because sometimes the truth can do more harm than fiction. Sidney concludes his apology for poetry by connecting human emotions to poetry. If you are rejected in love, you lack the skill of a sonnet. If you are forgotten in death, you lack an epitaph. Catch you soon in another My Modern Takeaway. <laughs>